All right, I want to say all praise to the Most High Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, pushing this doctrine of truth to the nation of Israel who are scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect. All right, I wanted to do a lesson on uh, DMX, the rapper's uh, overdose near fatal overdose just found out about this a little while ago thought it'd be a uh, uh, good topic to do a lesson on uh, because a few weeks ago I saw a video with uh, another camp I'm not sure if it was Sakari or it was another camp but it caught my attention because it was you know DMX um, at their camp listening to the word right and he seemed pretty interested he seemed very attentive because um, he sat there for a long while listening so I'm thinking alright well man maybe this brother's going to um, take heed to what's being uh, preached and uh, make the conversion into this truth right he already knows he's an Israelite so you know you just can't stop there you got to start following these laws, statutes, and commandments. Of course, establish your faith in Yahweh, while Yahweh shy, first and foremost. And then, again, you know, follow the law, statutes, and commandments. So I'm thinking, you know, this brother's on the right track. They exchange numbers. And um, obviously, we never heard what became of it, right? But we can only assume, based on his near-fatal overdose, that... Maybe he just listened and um, went back into the world or stayed in the world, okay? Um, but usually the issues of death are the Heavenly Father's. And when he pronounces death on you or some type of evil, or injury, car accident, overdose, um, you know, accidental shooting, that's not by coincidence. That doesn't happen by coincidence, obviously, right? It happens because the Heavenly Father commissioned it to happen. So that's obviously the case. Um, so let's just jump into the article and uh, we'll, we'll pull up some scriptures. So it reads, the headline is, Rapper DMX suffers dr a drug overdose, hospitalized, um, let's see, stars Missy Elliott and Viola Davis say they're praying for the 50-year-old hip-hop legend. So DMX is reportedly hospitalized af after suffering a drug overdose. Sources told TMZ that the 50-year-old rapper, whose real name is Earl Simmons, suffered an overdose at around 11 p.m. Friday, also triggering a heart attack. So generally, when you hear heart attack um, happening after an overdose or shortly after someone overdoses is always related to a stimulant um, usually that's either meth or cocaine the outlet said DMX was rushed to a hospital in White Plains New York and is in the critical care unit with some brain activity one source claimed he's in a vegetative state Reps for the hip-hop star did not immediately return Fox News' request for comment Saturday. So there you have it. Now, I just watched a, another video um, where a brother was saying that he, uh, he heard that he was taken off of life support. And um, that's basically all he could say. I couldn't find uh, any more videos. I guess uh, the the Fox News video that they had posted it's not playing for some reason. Obviously, the one I just clicked on, I get nothing but nothing. So anyway, I'm sure there's one floating around somewhere. But um, anyway, so there you have it. DMX overdoses on most likely cocaine because that was always his drug of choice. He said he started using coke at the age of 15 right how ironic brothers praying but he's obviously um, not in the truth and he this is what 10 15 years ago 
So we know full well this is before he found out about, you know, being an Israelite. Or maybe he did know, okay? And that's even worse. But um, at any rate, like I said, the Heavenly Father pronounced judgment on him. So let's go to the first scripture. Let's go to the book of Isaiah because this is very fitting regarding his visit to the camp. All right. This is Isaiah 65 verse 2. I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people which walketh in a way that was not good after their own thoughts. Okay. And this is the Heavenly Father telling you that he spread out his hands by way of who? The prophets out there on the highways and byways. Right? Because he ain't coming down from heaven on his own to spread his hands out to beg the nation of Israel to come back to him. Nah. He's got his prophets on the streets doing that. Right? Unto a rebellious people. And Jake, or you Israelites, you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are a very rebellious people. Okay? He also called us stiff necked Because we are. For all intents and purposes, I was a stiff necked re rebellious brother out there at one time, right? And um, let's see, which walketh in a way that was not good after their own thoughts. So we know Israelites, the two-thirds out there, they walk in a way that's not good, which means they're doing wickedness. They're committing sin after their own thoughts. See, a lot of our people follow that do as thou wilt doctrine that was created by a, a cult worshiper, a Satanist, I should say, a, sat a Satan worshiper by the name of Aleister Crowley. So he coined that term, do as thou wilt. Now, we know the rapper Jay-Z, um, I guess that was printed on uh, one of his, his shirts and his clothing line, do as thou wilt. Which basically means, um, you know, you do whatever you want to do, whether it's good or evil, right? And that's not the way to be, especially in these last days, because that is going to get you destroyed, okay? The Heavenly Father is not tolerating this, this wickedness anymore. He's about to crack open the skies and unleash His wrath, not only on the world, but two-thirds of our people, you wicked Israelites. All right, so let's go and get uh, the book of Romans, the wages of sin, chapter 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of Yahweh is eternal life through Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Christ. Okay, so sin also includes excessive alcohol intake. Drug use, slamming hair on in your veins, sniffing and smoking crack, doing mushrooms, okay? Doing all kinds of uh, drugs that alter the mind. Let's go to the book of uh, Amos, chapter 3, verse 6. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city, and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in a city, and the Lord hath not done it? So the Heavenly Father is responsible for drug overdoses leading to death, all right, or serious injury, all right? This is the Heavenly Father's doing. Let's go to the book of uh, Psalm. Chapter 68, verse 20. He that is our God is the God of salvation. And unto uh, Yahweh belong the issues from death. Okay, so all matters concerning death belong to Yahweh. I don't care who it is. Not just Israelites. You know, those wicked heathens out there as well. Okay, all people, all flesh. All matters or issues concerning death are the Heavenly Father's, okay? You see a brother walking across the street and he gets hit by a car and killed. That was the Heavenly Father who commissioned it, 
All right, you see a kid who's out there in the lake swimming and he gets swept under by an undercurrent and he drowns and dies. Guess what? That's the Heavenly Father. You know, maybe he did something in his previous life, something wicked. He lived a, a very wicked life and the Heavenly Father pronounced judgment on him in his third or fourth generation, you know, when he came back on the earth. That's the Lord's doing, right? Let's further prove that. Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 39. This is one of my favorite, favorite verses. <laughs> See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill, and I make alive. I wound, and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. And that's powerful, okay? So if the Heavenly Father decides, your number's up. If he decides he's going to kill you, there is nothing that anyone can do to save you. All right? So nobody is going to deliver you out of his hand if he pronounces judgment or death upon you. Right? That's how mighty and powerful the Heavenly Father is. See, and that's why it's important to heed the Heavenly Father's uh, his law, statutes, and commands or commandments, right? Because when you're not doing them, you're sinning. And we know what the wages of death are, okay? And if he doesn't get you in this lifetime, as far as a, a harsh judgment, he'll get you in your subsequent life, right? Say so you might live a whole, uh, you, you may live a, a long life, you know, to the ripe old age of 80, 85, and then die, right? But you come back the third or fourth generation and you die tragically in a house fire at age seven. Okay, you're burned to death, right? That's judgment from your previous life where you did wickedness, okay? Nobody escapes, nobody gets away from judgment, okay? It just so happens that these, uh, these heathen nations, now they're going to be judged as nations, all right? Now everybody's judged as individuals. The only nation that was judged as a nation, collectively, obviously, is the nation of Israel, you Israelites, okay? But our judgment, our punishment is just about up, okay? The two-thirds got to get theirs, right? Because it's judgment day, and the phone had to chime in on that. But the wicked two-thirds are going to get their judgment, right? And then the nations are going to get their judgment as a nation, okay? After they're destroyed here in Babylon the Great, when they come back, you're going to see slavery amongst the heathen nations, okay? But again, that's all commissioned by the Heavenly Father, right? All right. Let's go ahead and get Jeremiah chapter 16 because this proves that the Heavenly Father has his prophets out there on the highways and byways. And obviously by uh, DMX going to the camp, uh, I, th I think it was a, a Sakari camp, I'm not if I'm not mistaken. I can't remember, it was a few weeks ago. But uh, anyway, uh, these were fishers of men. These brothers were out there teaching and preaching the truth and um, DMX came along and they hooked them right with the word so to speak so it reads this is Jeremiah 16 and 16 behold I will send for many fishers saith the Lord and they shall fish them and after will I send for many hunters and they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill and out of the holes of the rocks now, obviously, these hunters are going to be, well, previously fishers, but before they become hunters, right, they're fishers of men, fishers of men, out there on the highways and byways, casting their line, okay, and the word is the, is the hook, to hook you in, right, to get you interested, make you find out what they're talking about, and this is how a lot of us were brought into the truth, okay? But then there are a lot more, a lot more people, or Israelites, 
who just choose to ignore it. They may acknowledge the fact that they're Israelites and that may make them happy. But for so many of us, that's enough. Just knowing you're an Israelite, all right? Um, there's a huge misconception amongst the Israelites that just being an Israelite is going to get you saved. And that's not true. That's, not, that's far from the truth, man. All right? Being an Israelite is not enough. All right? You got to repent for all your wickedness, all your sins. All right? You have to change the way you think. All right? You have to establish your faith in the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. All right? Follow those laws, statutes, and commandments. And again, change the way you think. All right? In terms of, uh, you know, sin and doing what's right. Okay, because it starts in the mind. All right, that's where salvation begins. It all starts in the mind. Um, speaking of which, I'm trying to think of it off the top of my head and I can't. <laughs> I'm failing miserably. Um, let's just go ahead and get it. I think it's Romans 12. Yes, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of Yahweh, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto Yahweh, which is your reasonable service. All right, the point is verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove that, or prove what is that good. That's confused. Uh, that's a tongue twister. And acceptable and perfect will of Yahweh. Okay? So, again, the takeaway point for this is you have to be transformed or converted by the renewing of your mind. And when you do that, you walk away from sin. You stay away from sin. You avoid sin at all costs, right? Because you know what the, you know what the penalty for sin is. Okay? But it all starts in the mind. Right? Anyway, I'm going to end it up there. Um, I want to say all praise to the Most High, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rekakadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders, a great millstone, pushing this doctrine of truth to the nation of Israel, scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. Till next time, hope this was edifying. Shalom.